every football club is owned in its entirety by the fans. They're the the key component of the club. If you t if you strip away the asset of the club, you strip away your biggest asset, um, and that's what's happened at Blackpool Football Club. We've now got a situation that a new season is starting, which is normally a time of hope and excitement. But for Blackpool fans, there doesn't at the moment seem to be very much to hope for. This is our, our club. I just can't understand why he'd want to drag such a historic club and, and, and it's named down. I think he has a, a fantasy in his head that he's running the football club properly and that certainly isn't the case. We're trying to literally save the club because we feel that the only way forward is for the Oysters to go. We were trying to give them an option to walk away um, with, with some remuneration, uh, not, not for nothing. So we put in a bid for the club. Um, we've tried to have a dialogue with the Oysters for the last year about what's going on. Uh, perfectly reasonable dialogue from our point of view and they refuse to talk to us at all. Oh, I think he actually wants it to turn violent because then he'd have the excuse that the fans are in the wrong and, and, and not him. Oh, Carl Oyston, where do you start? Um, I think he's a sociopath. The guy uh, has no sort of like regard for the fans of Blackpool Football Club. He's seen by the fans as a bit of a megalomaniac, I think, pretty much on the... They feel as though he's, he needs his hand on every decision, seems to want to control the fans and their behaviours. The guy's just a psycho, you know, it, but he loves every minute of it. The way I look at Carl is basically he just wants to mess us around. He thinks that we're going to disappear. It's not going to happen. Uh, the Tangerine Knights are a group of passionate fans that came together um, almost two years ago. Um, they were there as, um, as an alternative to the Supporters Trust, uh, as more of a direct focus group, and they wanted to arrange things like protests and, and direct action towards the owners of the club. Then you've got groups like ourselves, like the Tangerine Knights. We go a different way. We want to make everything uncomfortable for them. You know, and it doesn't stop at the football club. My aim is, is let's destroy him in every business that he owns. He's been accused of inciting the fans and that's a dangerous thing to do because you, you're dealing with very high emotions here. So it's, a very, it's a very poisonous place. It's, you know, th this club is a very proud club, but now I, I can't go anymore on games. I can't put myself through uh, that toxic situation anymore. He befriends people, he uses them to his own advantage financially more than anything. That's what he's really done to me. The first time that came up when a fan got sued, when the news came out about that, it's just jaw-dropping. The fans weren't happy with that uh, and therefore decided to uh, take direct action towards the, the owner uh, and particularly the chairman of the club, who we feel is the, uh, the cancer on the club. Thinks that we don't have any kind of positive input to the club to give him. He's doing the correct job, nobody can tell him any different. It's an arrogant attitude from a complete tosser, if I'm honest. Very sad for my family, I have an 88-year-old mum who has got Alzheimer's, who has been supporting Blackpool since she was 13. Her season ticket ran out last season, we have not renewed it, but it's absolutely heartbreaking for us as a family, knowing that my mum probably will never see her team play ever again. Um, he's banned fans pointlessly from the ground, me included, just because he didn't like the fact that I disagreed with his, his style of management at the football club. The bloke's an absolute idiot. To be literally engaged in a battle with your own fans, it, it's, it's crazy, it's absolutely crazy. I can't begin to imagine what goes on, in, particularly in Carl Oyston's head. He seems to like to wind fans up. It's just, it's just unbelievable, it's just how he's getting away with it. It's just absolutely unbelievable. He has to leave the club by one o'clock, so two hours before kickoff, and he can't return to the club till two hours after kickoff. Uh, that's because of a text exchange with me. As a personal level, I do know him. He isn't a very fit and proper person to run a football club. I don't think he has any interest of any person, anything to do with the football club, except the financial side of things. Fans can now play their part by creating the environment whereby the Oysters realise that there is nothing left for them here. When it comes to him leaving the club himself, 
we need to remember it's not down to him, it's down to Owen Oyston, who's the owner. We'll try and negotiate with the owners, we'll, we'll, we'll try and get a bid for the club accepted, we'll try and get as many people as possible to come on side with us uh, and, and make some real progress as a fans organisation. I hope that ultimately, with the fans standing together, and, and this really is the key, every single fan can play their part and they must stand up and be counted. I don't really think it matters what division we'll end up in in the end, but just really to claim our own football club back. It doesn't matter what he does, the football club will never cease to exist because of him, even if it enters administration. Uh, the heritage and the history is still there. I want to be proud of what we achieve. I want to be proud of, uh, of the players and of the manager. And that currently, I'm not proud of anything other than the fact that our fans are standing up to be counted in a lot of cases. I can't wait for that day when Blackpool returns to its fans. And at the end of the day, it's like that. If you want to play a game, you might win some battles, but you'll not win the war because we're here to stay.